In the 20th century, we succeeded in laying the first foundations for an outpost in LEO that is the ISS. Thanks to that, in this century, America can go further than LEO with a plan to build a lunar gateway that will be a bridge between our Earth and the Moon. Obviously, constructing a building in a place nearly 400,000 kilometers from Earth is very challenging, meaning requiring affordable delivery of significant amounts of cargo. Fortunately, with the support of SpaceX and NASA's partner under the Artemis program, nothing is impossible. Among them, can't help but say SpaceX's plan to develop a big size version of the Dragon spacecraft Dragon XL. However, its multi-year delay has raised many questions, especially since the birth of a gigantic vehicle like the Starship. So, find out the latest updates around this ambitious project in today's episode of TechMap. On January 7, NASA and the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center MBRSC of the United Arab Emirates, UAE, had an amazing handshake for the Gateway Project, humanity's first space station that will orbit the moon. The Lunar Space Station will support NASA's missions for long-term exploration of the moon under Artemis for the benefit of all. According to it, the UAE will develop the crew and science airlock module for the Lunar Gateway, helping complete the design of the Lunar Space Station. The airlock will allow Allow crew and science research transfers to and from the habitable environment of Gateway's pressurized crew modules to the vacuum of space. Hamdan bin Mohammed, Crown Prince of Dubai, stated that the project would be completed in 2030. As part of the agreement, the UAE will get a seat on a future Artemis mission, meaning they will provide a UAE astronaut to fly to the Lunar Space Station on a future Artemis mission. In addition to operating the airlock, the United Arab Emirates also will provide engineering support for the life of the Lunar Space Station. These transfers will support broader science in the deep space environment, as well as gateway maintenance. Once the UAE's airlock module goes into operation, not only will it serve a role as the transfer between habitable and vacuum environments, but will also be used as a secondary docking port. The Lunar Gateway will be like a transit station between the Orion spacecraft and Starship HLS. Indeed, when Artemis astronauts blast off from Earth, they'll be in the four-seat Orion spacecraft. Orion will take them to the Lunar Gateway, and astronauts later will move from the gateway to the Starship HLS. All maneuvers will occur through the docking ports on Gateway, such as Halo, connected to the spacecraft docking system, and in an emergency, the crew and science airlock will replace those ports. Referring to the docking system on the Starship Lunar Lander on NASA's website on February 28, we saw the announcement of its full-scale qualification testing. This system will connect the vehicle with Orion and later Gateway in lunar orbit during future crewed Artemis missions. At the time I made this report, NASA and SpaceX were busy Busy testing the new Starship HLS docking system. They recently completed 10 days of testing at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. They conducted more than 200 different docking scenarios involving different speeds and angles. The results from this full-scale testing will feed into ongoing computer models of the system, which will, in turn, feed into future testing and design. It's safe to say that SpaceX had a huge advantage in developing the docking system against Blue Origin, which developed the lunar lander Blue Moon for Artemis V. It is because previously Elon Musk's firm had four years to test this system successfully on Dragon 2. The Dragon 2 system allows the Dragon 2 spacecraft to dock with the ISS so crew and equipment can be transferred. The testing of Starship's docking system this time could be a clear signal of both SpaceX and NASA's determination to cancel the Dragon XL project. SpaceX's original plan was to develop and use the Dragon XL spacecraft to deliver cargo from and to the Gateway under the 2024 first Gateway Logistics Services contract, NASA required SpaceX to transport cargo to and from the Lunar Gateway. To accomplish that task, SpaceX would develop a heavily modified single-use version of its Dragon 2 spacecraft with more propellant storage, more space for cargo, and a range of other design changes. Known as Dragon XL, that spacecraft would weigh around 15 to 16 tons, roughly 33,000, 35,000 pounds, at liftoff and likely require a fully or partially expendable Falcon and heavy launch for each mission to the moon. At the time, it was a fairly balanced and reasonable choice on NASA's part, leveraging existing investments and experience with SpaceX and Dragon and erecting no major technical hurdles. However, it sounds like the emergence of the Starship rocket with much more capacity, more advanced technology, 
and cheaper has occupied the spotlight. Of course, NASA did not express directly its interest in Starship, and they delayed the project indefinitely instead. A NASA official said a year after the contract award that it had delayed a formal authorization to proceed on the first mission as the agency evaluated the overall plans for the Artemis program and when that mission would be needed. The lack of information since then, though, prompted speculation that the program might be in jeopardy. In 2022, the new April 1 STRFI was released by NASA as a roundabout way of saying that the agency highlighted interest in cargo transport capabilities well beyond the original contract's requirements and asked about innovative new capabilities that could enable such improvements. On February 22, 2023, speaking on a panel at the Spacecom conference, NASA's Mark Wise, manager of Deep Space Logistics for the Gateway program, said that SpaceX would use Dragon XL for those initial missions, but left the door open for using the company's Starship vehicle for cargo delivery in the future. We are all for enabling evolution, he said. We talked to them about Starship evolution and how it all worked together, but we're not there yet because it's still in a development phase. It makes sense in terms of economic terms. Everybody prefers a high-capacity vehicle Vehicle that could have a lower cost. Additionally, through the HLS program, NASA invested at least $3 billion in the Starship Lunar Lander project. With barely any modification, the Starship architecture SpaceX and NASA are already developing could be used to deliver dozens of tons of pressurized cargo to cislunar space, lunar orbit, the gateway, the lunar surface, or just about anywhere else NASA wants. Still, there are technical challenges and reasons to believe that Starship can't easily replace Dragon XL. The mass limit of the Gateway's visiting vehicle being just 14 tons means that vehicles like Dragon XL must adhere to this limit to safely dock with the Gateway without overloading it. If Dragon XL exceeds the mass limit, it could potentially pose operational challenges or safety risks during docking procedures. Starship would likely weigh at least 100-200 tons more than the entire Gateway. Thus, it's harder to make the vehicle meet that requirement. The non-cryogenic propellant that Dragon XL would use is more stable and storability in space missions, especially missions lasting for a long time. This big-sized spacecraft is expected to spend at least from 6 to 12 months at a time at the Gateway. This makes a big challenge for Starship powered by cryogenic propellants as they require specialized insulation and handling procedures to keep them in their liquid state. However, even with advanced insulation and thermal control systems, some boil-off of cryogenic propellants is inevitable over time. Therefore, mission planners must account for boil-off rates and plan refueling or replenishment strategies accordingly to ensure the mission's success. Anyway, if SpaceX still intends to use Starship to replace all of its current vehicles, and NASA repeatedly hints about utilizing this massive rocket for all of Artemis's aspects, there will be no reason for Dragon XL to be born. With current progress, we can guess that they have found great solutions to the problems mentioned on HLS. And what we should do right now is wait until HLS's docking system is certificated before performing its role in the the next Artemis mission. So, how about you? Do you think that Starship can replace Dragon XL in this case? Don't hesitate to leave your comment below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.